I would like to start with a story. When uh, my grand, uh, sorry, father-in-law was a young child, he was sitting in his uh, kitchen, and uh, he's 87 years old. He was sitting there, and uh, suddenly the phone rang. And he looked at it a little bit scared. And then uh, it rang again. And then he started to look out the windows and looking for his parents. And uh, wondering, what should I do? But he couldn't see his parents. And then uh, it rang again. And even more concerned, he looked at it and he started to walk towards it. And he took it and he lifted the receiver. And he said uh, in Swedish then, Jag kan inte telefonera, or I can't make phone calls, I, I don't know how to use this, and then he put down the phone again. <laughs> that was when we started to connect places. And remember, he was a bit afraid of the technology. Remember this during my speech. He didn't know how to use it. Do you remember 25 years ago when uh, some of us started to carry those bricks. I liked the one that I had and I was, uh, I was very happy with it. And I wanted to show everyone that I had one. Yeah, that's one, when the mobile phone came. The first thing that happened, the story about my grandfather, that was about connecting places, connecting offices. But when we were starting to wear those, we started to connect people. Now, what is happening? is that we're starting to connect everything. And yes, I am connected. And cars are being connected. Our homes, outlets in our homes, switches in our homes, everything is becoming connected. That is a fact. And it's moving very, very fast. We said a few years within Ericsson that in just a few years, 50 billion, there will be 50 billion connected devices. And I actually think uh, that will happen quicker than we believe. What are the drivers in, uh, in the networked society, as we call it? Yeah, there is a consumer drive. Consumers that want something. There is also a business drive. Businesses that want to make money on it. They want to connect their ecosystems. But uh, there is also a society drive. We have congestions on roads. We have uh, a lot of accidents and casualties in traffic. That is, a, that is a very strong drive. Those three together are very strong drivers for this to happen. That is what we see from our horizon. Let's take a quick look at each of these. This is an uh, study done by AT&T Drive and Ericsson Consumer Lab. And I've asked my team, is this really true? Is this really true? Because those numbers are a bit too strong for me. But what it said was 50% of all drivers surveyed worldwide, and worldwide, as you can see, it's United States, Germany, Brazil, Japan, and China in this case. 50% of all drivers surveyed worldwide, they could, could think of switching brands to a comparable brand if they could get the connected service. 75%, uh, 72 sorry, percent of the drivers would delay a car purchase by one year to buy a car with connected car services. 65% of drivers surveyed after learning about connected car services consider them an important feature in their next car. From a business perspective and what we see happening, and by the way, before I talk about that, I just, ca I just came from Mobile World Congress, and I think something really strange is going on. I thought Mobile World Congress was about telecoms, but uh, in Mobile Co World Congress, you see loads of cars. And in the Ericsson Hall, what attracts most people is where we have a car. That's where everyone is. So these businesses and businesses in general, 
they're really merging. Really interesting to see what is happening. The business perspective, 50% of, uh, as far as I know, and you correct me later on if I'm, if I'm not right, not right. 50% of the business is after market, market services. Then, of course, as a car manufacturer, you want to stay in contact with the car owner. You need a connected ecosystem where, of course, the car is connected to the driver, but you also want the vehicle and the owner of the car to be connected to you as an automotive OEM or to a dealer or, of course, to the repair shop. And we see this happening right now. And just because we have seen this happening, what we have developed and what we're actually selling today built on the fact there is a need for connected cars is what we call a connected vehicle cloud. If we go to uh, the society perspective, we're actually doing something similar here. Traffic authorities today can get a lot of information from different sources, from drivers, from sensors in, in cars, from sensors along the road. This is not about driving the cars for the drivers. This is about information making life easier for the drivers. Collecting all this information into a connected cloud. And I will come back to what the cloud is, because cloud, clouds are normally very cloudy. But I will, I will talk to you about what we mean with that. And then traffic authorities can decide what kind of information they want to distribute. And that distribution doesn't go to everyone. As a consumer or as a driver today, I get a lot of information through radio. And I'm sometimes told that 140 kilometers away from me, there is a, an accident. Or it's, in Sweden, a slippery road. That information doesn't give me much value, to be honest. Of course, it has to be much more directed to where I am. So the day we're really connected, and I think we are becoming really connected, then we can actually distribute this information to the ones who really needs it in specific areas. So what we, are, what we have built is a connected traffic cloud, making it possible to collect data and distribute that, that data in a smarter way. I could have put a big cloud on this slide and then talking about a cloud, but this is really what we mean with the cloud. It is about ICT infrastructure. It is about connectivity management. It is about device management and enabling a service for the user or for an industry. To do this, and this is very important for a company like Ericsson, and I think you all agree here, to do this in a really good way and to really be able to do something good for the user, for the business and for society, regulations and standardizations are very, very important. That will help us all. And of course, Ericsson is a business. We want to make money. That's how simple it is. But we also want to do something good for society and drive this standardization and regulation. When you introduced me, you said I was responsible for industry and society. And why have we, who have been in telecoms for 139 years, started, started to look at other industries? What we see is a huge shift in all industries. Some industries have actually already gone through that shift. If you take the media industry, music industry, a really destructive shift, changing the business environment totally. We see that that will happen, or are about to happen, to other industries as well. Maybe not that, in that strong way for the automotive or the transport industry, but it will definitely happen. And connectivity here and mobility in a telecom way, mobility in a telecom way, will definitely change the way we do business in the transport automotive business as well. We see this happen also in the utilities business, a big shift. Smart meters in homes, 
smart grid networks. And we also see this happening when it comes to public safety. So what we have focused on within Ericsson is not to try to do everything, but try to build an ecosystem for the telecoms industry where we've been for a long time, the media industry where we actually are today, you don't know it, but the biggest broadcaster. We broadcast BBC's uh, channels, for instance. The transport business with automotive. The, the, uh, sorry, the, um, yeah, did I say the utilities and the public safety business. So what we will strive for is something that is not stovepipe oriented. We will try to build something that can work cross industries and can work cross the transport industry. Very, very important. So I would like to come back to that again. Standardization and regulation. If that's not there, this will take too long time, if you ask me. Thank you. <clears throat>